tiny friends and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be creating some decorative dishes for the Josephine House Kitchen and I'm just going to use my treasure trash. And I've collected some recyclable packaging from um, products that you would normally get at a grocery store and I thought these would make great various dishes as far as baking ware or dinner plates, bowls, decorative dishes so I'll be exploring with some of that today and I've got some plastic pull tabs here that I've pulled off of juice cartons and then I have a couple pieces here that had a distinctive shape and I instantly thought that they looked like Pyrex baking ware so these actually came off of the Daisy brand sour cream squeezable pouch and today I'll be creating a Pyrex inspired casserole dish and lid with these. So that's going to be super fun and cute. And then I also have a few pieces that I pulled out of my daughter's Barbie collection that I thought were small enough to fit inside a 112 scale dollhouse. So I have a plate and a platter that I will be creating decorative collectible pieces to sit on the shelves in the kitchen. And then I have these two little pieces over here that I also thought were small enough to fit inside the 112 scale dollhouse. And with this little yellow piece here, I thought I could create some sort of sugar jar and paint it to look porcelain or glass. And I thought that might be really cute. And then with this piece here, I thought this could be a collectible piece that also sits on the shelf in the kitchen. But for these two little pieces, I'm going to save those for later and work on those another time. So I'll just set those aside and come back to those. To begin with, I'm going to start with the Barbie plates, my platter and my plate. And I'm going to start with my painter's pen and I'm going to use this for a base coat. Now this is an enamel type of paint and it's really good to use on plastic for a base coat. This type of paint is super thin and it sticks to everything and in the end you get a nice smooth finish so you're not left with any brush strokes it just melts right into a nice smooth finish so this is why I prefer to use this type of paint when painting little plastic pieces and then I'm going to go in and give it a couple coats of acrylic paint after this dries. You can use gesso and Mod Podge, and you can also use a tester's modeling paint, but I prefer a thinner paint to get a smoother finish in the end. So I'm just going to set these aside and let them dry and come back to them. And now I'm going to work on my pull tabs here. And the first thing I'm going to do is snip off these rings, and I'm going to stay as close to the base as possible when cutting these off and this is a softer type of plastic so it's really flexible and it doesn't take much to just snip these off at all so I'm gonna cut them all off and move on now I have these pieces here that are gonna make great dinner bowls and they're a bit wobbly and I need to add a base onto the bottom parts to keep them more stable so they don't wobble around but before I do that, I'm going to take my crafting blade and I'm going to remove any excess plastic that's left behind from cutting off the rings. Now, if you have a super sharp brand new blade, this stuff is going to cut like butter. It's so easy to cut. So if you try this, tiny friends, you want to be very careful so that for one, you're not cutting your fingers and for two, you're not cutting too much of the plastic off because you don't want a big dip or chunk in your rim or in your pieces. So just take your time when doing this and do it nice and slow. But I'm just removing any of this excess plastic right off so that I can have a more even finish in the end. And now that I have all of these pieces cut off, I am going to take my filing stick here, which is just a nail filer, and I'm going to start to sand the bottom bases here in a circular motion. And I am staying super light with this because it doesn't take much to remove 
uh, this coating off. And, and this is going to remove any of that coating and dull it down and give it a little bit of texture so that when I glue my bases on, the glue will actually have something to grip onto. So just a circular motion very lightly to prepare that for the glue. So now I'm going to take my little tabs here that I've cut off and I'm going to add them onto the bottom as the bases here. I thought they were a perfect size and they actually give it a realistic look and shape of a real dinner bowl. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Here's one I have glued on already and see how that's shaped just like a real little dinner bowl. So I thought these would be really perfect for that. What I'm going to do is cut as close to the rim or the opening as possible. I don't want to leave an edge or a rim because I, when I glue these down, I want them to look like one piece. So I'm going to take my scissors here and I'm using my scissors with the rounded tips. Are these suture scissors? I think they're suture scissors. But I like using these when I'm cutting circular shapes because they have that curve that just curves right around the piece that I need to cut. And I'm cutting as close to the opening as possible. And then I can take my filer and just sand around the edges here to smooth them out and even them out a bit. And it's pretty simple. It sands really well these little plastic pieces and also to give the glue something to attach to as well. So I'm just roughing it up just a little bit and evening out that rim that I've cut off. Now this piece of plastic that I'm using here is super thin so if you're trying this tiny friends and you're using a piece of super thin plastic just be very gentle and light so that it doesn't end up crushing on you and causing permanent creases. But now I'm going to go ahead and apply my glue to the rim here. And I'm using a mixture of Gorilla Wood Glue and Tacky Glue that I have combined together. And I found when I combine these two together, it leaves an immaculate hold and it grips super quickly. So I really do like to combine these two glues together and use them on plastic pieces. So now I'm just gonna place my little bowl right on top of its base, pressing down in the middle here. So attaching my piece to the base here and I'm taking my time to adjust it so that it's not sitting at an angle and they're nice and straight. And here are my pieces and this is how they look with their bases. I love these little bases on these pieces because they really do look like little dinner bowls. So this is what they look like and I'm noticing that um, there's some plastic around the edges that are fraying and they look like little hairs. So I'm just going to go in and gently file right around all of the pieces and try to remove some of that excess plastic that's fraying on the edges there. But I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint and I've chosen the rhubarb color because it looks like a vintage red to me. And if you're using chalk paint for the first time, don't be fooled by the color and the shade when first applying it because chalk paint dries in a darker shade than when applying it. But you can do this technique in many different ways. You can just do the rim and do a little bit of color around the rim. You can do different designs while doing this, but I'm just taking my sponge here and dabbing the whole rim in a solid color here. And I just love the way this color looks when it dries. It's kind of like a vintage red or kind of almost like a, a little hint of orange in this red when it dries, but it definitely looks like a vintage color. And I would have to say that this is a fall time color. So I chose to go with a fall theme for these dishes here. 
So now that my platters are done drying here, I can go ahead and give it a base coat on the back sides. And it really doesn't take much as you can see. I only really need one coat of this paint. And I'm still using the paint from the painter's pen. And the only reason why I decide to go in behind it with acrylic paint is just to save some of the product of the painter's pen. But I'm going to go ahead and set these aside to dry and begin to work on that little casserole dish that I wanted to create. And I begin with my filer and I just file right around the edge here and remove any of that fraying plastic. And then I'm going to go in and just paint right around the rims. Now I don't have to paint over the white with these because they don't have a base to them so I'm going to leave the white as is. And I'm using a chalk paint called Ballet Slippers. But after this chalk paint dries I end up going in with a couple coats of acrylic paint in a similar shade of pink because I didn't think the chalk paint was dark enough. But this is all it really takes for these, this little casserole dish here. Just a little bit of paint right around the rim here. So now I can begin to work on the back sides of my dinner bowls here. And I'm taking the same rhubarb color and I'm just taking my time as I go along the edges here. And I'm going to give it a couple coats of this and then I'm going to begin to paint the white side of this. Now tiny friends, this part right here is definitely the ugly stage, but I promise you after a few coats of this paint here and a good cleanup, these little dishes will not look like that in the end. So here are my decorative plates and I've sanded right around the rims here. And for the round plate, I'm going to leave it that natural color. But for this yellow one here, I decided to go with a really pretty shade of violet. And I'm just going to take um, my time when I do this, tiny friends, and I'm going to go right around the edge here and give it a couple coats. And I'm also going to give it just a little bit of a design. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to give it just a little design here so that it's just a little more than covering up the rim. And I can set these aside to dry. And when I come back, I'll begin to use my decals to decorate the front side of them. So I'm going to use rub-on decals here and I'm really just playing around with the arrangement because I'm not really sure how I want to uh, arrange these little pieces here but the thing about rub-ons is you can just take little clippings of this image and little clippings of that image and you can put them together to create one whole piece. You can layer them on top of each other. I'm just going to take my time here while I arrange them because I'm not really sure on how I want it to look yet. But this is what it's looking like so far and I noticed that some of the paint has peeled off when I pulled off my plastic piece. Now for this plate, that's okay because it kind of blends into the design, but to avoid that from happening, you want to give it a thin coat of some sort of varnish and let that dry completely before adding your decals. So that's exactly what I decided to do here with my purple platter because I definitely didn't want any of the yellow to come through on the design here. So now that I've added the decals to my plates here, this is what my bowls are looking like. And I decided to use different fall time leaves. And then I decided that these were too decorative to eat on. So I'll be adding these to the kitchen walls.
as decor dishes. Now for my little casserole dish, I decided to go with this pretty pink flower and I only have one of these decals. So I am definitely gonna take my time when rubbing this on and peeling this off. And if you're using rub-on decals for the first time, I would definitely peel the plastic off slowly and take your time. Don't just take the whole thing off at once. Double check to make sure that your image has transferred onto your piece. And if not, you can lay that piece back down, give it another good rubbing, and then your image should be right where it needs to be. So definitely take your time and double check when peeling off this plastic. So this is what it looks like. And I just absolutely love it. I think it's so cute. Now for the last step, I'm gonna coat each piece with two or three layers of a clear top coat nail polish and this is going to melt away any blemishes or textures that is left in the paint and give it a nice smooth finish. It also gives it a nice glazed glass look so that this piece no longer looks like plastic but now looks like glass. So I definitely love using this as a, a last step here for a varnish. Now I hope you all have enjoyed this video today and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and click that like button and let me know so in the comments below. And I am going to finish this video off with a photo montage of the final results and we're going to go into the kitchen to see what the pieces look like in their permanent places. And until next time, tiny friends, you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.